Hello and welcome to Gus McDowell Games. My name is Nick McDowell and today we are playing the NATO campaign in Naval War Arctic Circle with the first mission, Arctic Cod Conflict. Naval War Arctic Circle is based on a hypothetical Great Arctic War set in 2030 and largely fought as the name suggests in the North Atlantic, Arctic, Baltic and the North Sea. The NATO campaign covers the Great Arctic War as experienced from the Northern Partnership and NATO alliances. In this mission we will protect friendly fishing vessels from aggression. Each mission starts with a news article to give us some context. The Daily Global Courant, Friday 21 June 2030. Royal Norwegian Navy moves to protect trawlers. Arctic cod conflict causes deep freeze of Russo-Norwegian relations. As the so-called Arctic cod conflict escalates, Norway has sent warships to protect trawlers operating in the disputed Russian exclusive economic zone. Please pause the video if you'd like to read the full article. And while you're doing so, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more great content. So Mission 1, Arctic Cod Conflict. The description is to prevent enemy units from engaging friendly fishing vessels. Our rules of engagement are do not fire unless fired upon, and our objectives are to destroy aggressive aircraft. So we've got two new detections, a large contact and ordinary contact, and on the right hand side, top right hand side, are our objectives and limitations. To begin with, we'll uh, get the F-35 group moving on an intercept course between the uh, hostile aircraft and our surface vessels. This is our first fisheries group here, or second fisheries group. And this is our first fisheries group to the south-southeast, the correction south-southwest. Up here we have a Boeing P-8A Poseidon little high for an anti-submarine warfare profile and back to the F-35s um, okay we have a berry of A-50U Chamel which is an AWACS style aircraft and we have the Bannock air station on our side and you can see the uh, the available aircraft there we're going to take two F-35s and launch them on a uh, patrol station to the south southeast of the surface vessels. We'll take another two uh, and launch them in a patrol station slightly to the east of that original of the first patrol. And that puts them between Alanya Air Base and the uh, surface ships. We also have a helicopter but we're not going to use that at this stage. So that's Bannock Air Station. A handy piece of terrain right near the runway there. And we have our F-35s. Okay, we've had a uh, detection of an Aeroflot a civilian airliner, so we'll need to be careful. You can see that marked in yellow on the map, uh, Boeing 767. And the, uh, the tail is saying Turbo Tape, Turbo Tape Games, or TTG Airlines, which is cute. That's the name of the developer of Naval War Arctic Circle. So this is the Boeing 767, operated by Aeroflot, or TurboTape Games, uh, and we can't shoot this down. So our F-35s are uh, yep, happy with their speed and height, and they're moving on an intercept course. We've got our Poseidon. Uh, we might turn on its ANAPY-10 radar, give us a bit of... Imp uh, there we go, immediately we've got a detection of, a, uh, of an oil tanker, the Moscow University. Now at this stage, we have to remember, hostilities haven't commenced, so this is not a target at this point but it is useful to know it's there uh, and for that reason we're also not automatically engaging the uh, the two air contacts now this is a, an air contact we've detected but we've yet to identify it's been detected by the Poseidon and also by Bannock Air Station's radar yep and the frigate the Friedhof Nansen frigate here. Uh, we might just uh, have a look at that. It's uh, weapons ranges indicated there. Okay, And the ESSM or the Evolved uh, Sea Sparrow Missile is the one that would be most useful against these air targets. Um, and as you can see however it's still out of range. They've only got a range of 27 nautical miles so hence the F-35 is going to be very useful on intercept. So we might uh, 
got an ANSPY1F radar, 260 nautical mile range, a Spherion MRS2000 sonar uh, with a 4 nautical mile range. We might activate that just in case, and a CapTast Mark II V1 towed array sonar with a 12 nautical mile range. Again, uh, while we haven't uh, been briefed on the presence of submarines, it uh, makes a bit of sense to have our sonar out and active uh, just in case there's something lurking out there that we should be aware of. We'll speed up time now and see how the scenario develops. We have these air contacts moving in on our surface ships, uh, but again, there's no hostilities at this stage, so it's concerning, but, uh, but uh, only concerning. slow time down. That air contact is almost within range of our ESSM and we've identified it now as a Sukhoi Su-27SM aircraft. And there's the Beriev A-50U Schmel, the AWEX aircraft, keeping an eye on proceedings and that is definitely a high value target if we do commence hostilities. Okay, we'll speed time up, see what's happening. Seems the Sukhoi is doing a fly past of these surface vessels and not engaging the surface vessels. But what we'll do with this F-35, we'll get it to swing behind and essentially chase uh, the Su-27. Uh, that also means that if it does engage in any hostile acts, the F-35's got a shot from the rear. Okay, just checking out the air plot, nothing else is happening. Okay. So that Sukhoi is now well within the ESSM range of the Friedhof Nansen. And if it did engage in hostile action, it's very easily targetable. We'll increase time and see what happens. At this stage nothing is happening in terms of hostile action. Okay, we'll go back to our F-35s and we'll put them in a chase. Get them to follow that Sukhoi. And obviously uh, it would be monumentally stupid for that aircraft to engage in hostile action because it's within the range of our F-35 and of our ESSMs from the Friedhof Nansen. Nonetheless, we'll see what happens. Speed up time a bit more. It looks like the Sukhoi is going towards the. Uh okay, there we go. There are our units. These are our detections. There's our mission log. Our objectives are listed here. Shoot down at least five hostile aircraft. Friendly fishing vessels must not be destroyed. Frigate must survive. Do not kill civilian units. Do not kill neutral units. Um, so it looks like the Suko is going towards the uh, the uh, anti-submarine warfare platform, which is a bit concerning. Okay, we'll give them that. We're speeding up time just a little bit. See how the plot develops. There's nothing else happening and there we have a launch. We have a launch from the Sukhoi and immediately we launch from the F-35. So they've launched um, anti-aircraft missile which is the Vimple R-77 AEPD or the ADA, the AA-12 ADA missile, the Vimple and it is definitely going for the Poseidon here, the Boeing Poseidon. So we'll, um, we've turned off its radar to see if, it, um, if that helps its survivability any. It's uh, at military speed so it's going as fast as it possibly can, and we give it a course uh, directly away from the missile so that it's it's increasing the closing range. And here's the uh, Su-27SM, a flanker B. And it's uh, shot down. So that's our first of our five hostiles. Well, there's not much we can do about the AA missile, but we'll now target the, uh, the adversary's AWACS aircraft. We'll try and bring that down. We have two more groups of aircraft, as you can see here, both in patrol patterns, so there's a lot we can be doing. We do need to be mindful of the civilian airliner, though, and, and ensuring that that's not engaged. And um, the Poseidon, yep, is uh, at 
maximum speed that it can go. And at this stage it's going to have to rely upon its flares and countermeasures to survive. And you can see it's got five flares. And that missile is closing in. Okay, unfortunately the Poseidon has been shot down. So at this point it is uh, game on for hostilities against the Red Force. And we've got some missiles coming in at F-35. So miss F-35s in that uh, southern group have launched against the... Uh, the uh, sh the against the AWACS and um, they've got some anti-air coming in on them so we'll move that middle group of F-35s into a patrol pattern to the south there's obviously some air assets we're not detecting um, that are off to our southeast meanwhile these are the AIM-120D AMRAM missiles that we've uh, launched against the AWACS and uh, knocking that out of the sky will deny our adversary uh, situational awareness on, on our forces Meanwhile, our F-35s are going defensive, and we'll get them maximum speed moving away from the direction of the AA missiles to increase their survivability. Okay, so we'll um, put the radar on for our surface vessel, see if we can detect what those air assets are. Uh, the radars are on at Bannock Air Station, so I'm hoping that at some point we will be able to detect whatever it was that launched against us. Speed up time a little bit and slow down. Let's have a look at that Schmel. And there it is. And success. We've shot down the Berry of A50U Schmel. And that's the second hostile aircraft that we've shot down towards our objective, mission objectives of shooting down five hostile aircraft. Okay, the, meanwhile the uh, anti-air missiles seem to have run out um, of range, so we'll now turn our F-35s back in, activate their radars and see if they can acquire uh, the adversary aircraft. Um, and what we need to do at this stage is use our six F-35s, yep, and activate the radar on this one as well, um, use our six F-35s as an air screen for the surface vessels, the fishing fleet and the Friedhof Nansen. Okay, and there we go. We've got our first fixed-wing aircraft contact. Just out of range. And how are we tracking for these guys? Okay, and out of range of their aim ramps. Okay, we've got them set to close and engage. And we'll get them to do that. Uh, close, engage, and target that, that air contact. We'll speed up time to... Uh, bring them within range and it looks like uh, one of those F-35s groups is going back to Bannock Air Station uh, these guys are still okay for fuel uh, we'll speed them up okay we've got another detection so it's starting to complicate the AMRAMs are within launch range so we'll fire against the first group that we've detected fire against the second group And we've got a third detection, which we will engage them as well. Now, by firing on these groups, um, not only do we, of course, uh, increase the chances of shooting them down, but also we force them to react, which is important. It spoils any attacks that they, they might have been contemplating on us. And as you can see here, all three of the adversary's air contacts um, had turned to, uh, to evade the missiles. Uh, and that gives us a bit more time and space. So here's the SU-27 SMD group, and one of them is shot down. That's now three aircraft against our tally. We fire against the remaining aircraft. We've got another SU-27, and it's shot down, which means we've shot down now four aircraft in total. And we've got one to, to, to go before we meet the mission objectives. And at this stage, it appears we've been fortunate to only have lost uh, the one aircraft, being the Poseidon, that uh, was shot down initiating these hostilities.
And there we go, the final SU-27 shot down, bringing the scenario to a close. As always, thanks for watching. For more Naval War Arctic Circle content, check out the NATO campaign and Jersey blockade playlists on our channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.